Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We return to the land of serendipity with Poppy Seed, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Being a big brother or sister is a special job. Yes, no more two-minute stories. That weren't actually two minutes. I don't entirely remember how I ended up with this particular serendipity book. The stamp on the inside tells me I bought it at school, probably in one of those book fairs. Oh, I remember those. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why I would have gotten a book about a cow. Moo. Or about being a big brother or sister, because I'm not. I'm a little brother. Dedicated to Sharon Bukotsi, an aunt of sorts, who brought me a cow that became many cows, which nearly stole my heart away. Stephen. Holy cow. There were many delights in the land of serendipity. Natural delights. Trees sang in the mountain breezes that blew so gently there. Clouds slipped across the skies, warning of early spring storms that sometimes blew down into the valleys, dressing all in a mantle of snow. Early spring snows, drifting snowflakes that dusted the meadows with a blanket of white, sometimes even tickled the nose of a bunny who chose to scamper about, leaving footprints for others to follow. Hmm. What's really interesting about the picture is it's a bunny? But the bunny's facing away from us. We can see the tracks that he made, or she made, but it's kind of interesting how the bunny is facing away from us. And once again, stellar art by this artist. Really nice kind of texturing to the way the grass that's peeking through the snow and the pine trees in the background. In this land of serendipitous delights was a farm. A simple farm indeed. Whiteboard fences, neatly ordered, ordered this farm to hold some creatures in and others out. Here winter finally slipped away, and beneath the mantle of snow were clover and daisies, which popped up their heads as if to welcome spring. They popped out of snow, like daisies! In the barnyard, ducks, geese, and old mother hens busily bustled about, arranging this and that, food for spring, and maybe a picnic or two when summer came. Here, too, was a once mighty horse, still mighty with the pride of memory, but long since past the age of plowing and pulling. He, too, felt the call of the springtime breezes with their tease of things to come. Very nice. It, I can actually see, like, the texture of the material that was colored on. It feels like it's a canvas, because there's all this texturing inside of... It could be paper, too. It's just, it has such nice underlying texture, and the art has this wonderful feel to it. This nice big horse in the foreground, chickens in the background next to a barn, geese. No cow so far. Also, once again, the animal looking away from us. Hmm. But the best of the farm, and of all who lived here, and the best to me, were the cows that mooed and mowed in the meadow. Big brown eyes that could cause a grown man to cry if he took the time to look, blinked in wonder at the springtime meadow, for what had been fields of snow the day before were now beginning to bloom. They stood there, great heads lifted high above the fence, sniffing the air and breathing all the newness about them. Then one by one, they marched to the meadow to taste firsthand the sweetness of spring. I almost think this art is like done with pencil. It's really nice. I just love the, even though I think it's not with pencil, I want to say stroke, because there's such nice pencil strokes with the way the fur on the ear is and the texturing of the fur of the animals themselves, especially in the browns and the darker colors, because I think the artist is using absence, like the white of the material they're working on for colors like white, so you don't see any texturing inside of them except for just on the edge where they added a little bit of color. It's so nice and detailed and realistic. It's, like, it's a stark contrast to what we've been looking at for a while. Of this herd of cows, there were three a bit more special than the others. More special because the mother, Mary Ellen, and the father, Tinker, had calved a late winter child, a calf newborn. 
Late winter calves are rare, for normally all calves are born in the middle of spring. They named their calf after the winter poppy that grew, and because he was but a child, they simply called him Poppy Seed for the beginning of new flowers to come. The father, I'm guessing it's the father, just looks so proud. I mean, just look at that smile on the face and looking over at the mother. The mother's bending down and kissing the child or cleaning the child. Nestling. And I love the detail. You can see the muscles, the backbone. Just, wow. It's been such a long time since I've seen this artist's work. So nice. It's just such nice texturing, the detail of the tree in the background. Kind of the detail in the, of the grass in the background, but really focused on the, the softer grass of the field underneath the cows and the fence in the background. So nice. Whoa. Yeah, cute. Poppy Seed had the best of the best, for being an only child in an adult herd can be a wondrous blessing. The bulls would butt him in great mock battle. The other cows would laugh at his antics as he chased a butterfly on his tail, round and round like a whirling dervish. Wow. Very dervish. That's a good image right there, especially if you've ever seen them. Like, look up whirling dervish on YouTube. As I reacted, it's extremely... Oh, God, it's cute. I mean, just look at those eyes and that face and the smile. It's an open mouth smile, too. Just tongue and the ears and... Wow. <laughs> so funny and so well done. You can see the actual wrinkles in the skin there from the muscles in the neck. That's neat. So I'm trying to figure out what this is down here. It looks like a tuft of wild hair. Well, the one thing that gets me is you look at the three cows in the background. These two almost look like they could be retracings of each other. Yeah, the only difference really is the way the legs are, especially the front legs. Yeah, the back legs look like they're very similar. There's a difference in the spacing on the front legs, but the way they're facing, the shaping of the head, the overall pose. Very similar, like like you said, almost identical, but the horns are a little bit longer too. So they may have been a partial tracing, but with modifications. Even when Poppy Seed got into trouble, the others never scolded or punished him. One day, he even tried to eat the greener grass that grew on the other side of the fence. Unable to clamber between the rails, he tried to climb over the top. As is always the case in these kinds of situations, he did nothing more than get stuck. He was a mugwump, if you would, with his mug on one side and his wump on the other. <laughs> I've never heard that term before, but I, 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 get, what they're, I get what they're going for, yeah. Very teeter tartary, and that, that image, when it first struck me, I was like, whoa! Uh, just, his butt is, like, hanging on the fence, and he's probably, like, mooing really loudly for his parents right now. And, though I think what there may have been going for with this image is, he was just about to taste the grass when suddenly he realizes, oh shoot, I'm stuck. Two of the bulls and three of the cows pulled and tugged, and with a thump, his wump and mug were on the same side once again. But like all things, even the barnyard changes. With the warmth of spring and the promise of summer yet to come, the other cows suddenly became edgy, irritable if you like. Now Poppy Seed had always been allowed to take lunch when he liked from any cow bearing milk, and this day he stopped, as was his wont, and began to sip a bit. But this day, unlike the others, he was rebuffed and shooed away. Try though he might, none of the cows wished to share their milk. One of the cows, irritated by his insistence, even flapped him in the face with her bushy tail. He doesn't look too upset about it. No, he looks at first, before we get done to that part, I was thinking like, oh, he's playing a game. We just happen to have a tail in shot. And no, no, he's being smacked in the face. Hmm. There's that texturing in it. I think it's being done on paper with pencil. I'm like seeing, if this is the same techniques they were using in the other books, I'm like seeing stuff now that I didn't see before. Bawling, he ran about the meadow seeking his mother and father. Oh, mother, he cried. The cows won't share their milk. Worst of worse, they don't even want me around. There, there, mooed his mother. It isn't you, my little poppy seed, for this is the time of the others. Others? asked Poppy Seed, totally confused. You mean to say that I'm not the only one? 
Yes, said his father, for in this time of late spring the other babies will be calved, and then you will not be the only little one. You'll have brothers, sisters, and cousins galore, and even more. So does that mean they're expecting to now? Or do they just mean... The herd in general, because the herd's kind of a family. Those eyes. So sad. Mm-hmm. And the others came. That day, and the next, and the next. The meadow was filled with the anxious cries of newborn calves as they were dropped into the middle of life. Poppy Seed looked on in wonder at this miracle of birth. One moment, there was one very fat cow, and the next, there were two cows. One a very tired mama, and the other a wobbly-legged newborn calf. With the birth of the others came a great change in the meadow, and a greater change in Poppy Seed's life. Before, when he would spin around chasing butterflies on his tail, the cows and the bulls of the herd would laugh at his antics. But now they paid him little mind. In fact, they even called him a bother and told him to go away. It seemed that the little calves were more special. It seemed that they were all cuter than he. So far I would say no. But still another nicely drawn calf. You can see all the little wrinkles around the neck. And the mother is behind the calf. Probably like nuzzling or shooing along or helping steady. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Once again, the details are so nice. I never noticed this texturing before. I'm guessing because of the contrast between this book and the two-minute story artists, I can now see this stuff I didn't see before. I might have to pull the other books back out and let looks look at them again. One of the cows even told him that he was an older brother now, not a baby, and that he should make himself useful and help, not hinder. With the rebuff ringing in his ear and a tear in his eye, he wandered from the herd, which didn't even notice that he had walked away. It was then, in the confusion of his self-pity, that Poppy Seed decided to run away. He clambered upon the fence and thought for a time he was stuck, but no bull or cow came to his rescue. Ah, you can see the single deer, though he looks like a different color. Yeah, because he's brown here. He's kind of a grayish, more of a gray than a brown. You can see hints of the brown. But a little more gray. I wonder if it has to do with how old he is. Could. Also how sad he is. Hmm. Feeling gray. Old cows, he grumbled as he picked himself out of the mud on the other side of the fence. I don't need that old herd. Maybe I should become a horse and plow the fields. That will make me useful. With that, he trotted from the meadow to the old sun-bleached barn to find the harness and a plow to pull. Once in the barn, he pulled and tugged on the harness and reins until, with a crash, they fell about his neck. With the gear tangled and wrapped about him, there was no way for him to walk, let alone pull a plow. The calf, which is still slightly off color, now has one of those horse harnesses draped over him. You know, the big yoke, think Big Mac, on him, and he's got all the leather straps and everything just laying on top of him, and he looks so confused. Like, I didn't expect this to be this large on me. He would have been there to this very day had not the old farm horse found him in the mess he had made. Laughing in that neighing way that horses laugh, the old horse pulled the gear off Poppy Seed's back. Put that back, cried the little calf, for if I am to become useful, I must carry the harness and learn to pull the plow. And why, asked the old horse, would you ever want to pull a plow? It was then that Poppy Seed, with tears in his eyes, told the old horse the story of the calving in the meadow. Ah, little calf, consoled the old horse. Being a big brother isn't so bad. The little ones need to have bigger ones to look up to. The little ones need to be shown what to eat and where to eat it. The little ones need to be taught not to climb the fence. The little ones need an older brother to love. All of this made little sense to Poppy Seed, and it seemed that he was not even wanted in the barn by the horse. Sadly, with his head held low, he went back over the fence and once again into the meadow. It was there that he bumped, quite innocently, into one of the little calves who was trying to eat a weed. Once again, sad little Poppy Seed, though wise, nice gray horse. 
very nice. A uh, dappled, is that the term? A nice dappled horse. White spots on a gray body. You can see the harness in the background. Ooh, nice texturing on the hay. But look at that sad face. It's kind of interesting how the art style is very realistic, but it has certain over-exaggerations in it to help emphasize character expressions. Oh, don't eat that, Poppy Seed sighed. Weeds taste like dirt. Here, eat the clover and the grasses, for they are sweet to eat. He patiently showed the little calf all the sweets to eat, and it wasn't long before he was surrounded by a small herd of little ones looking up to him in admiration. Unlike the older cows, the little calves didn't tell him to be useful, for he was. And more than that, Poppy Seed was loved for what he was, an older, bigger brother. Ooh, a nice sunset. Though there's no actual sun in the picture, but they use the coloring of that time of day. The reds and the oranges in the background, and the characters are partially silhouetted by the light coming from behind them. Everything's dimmer and darker, and the calves are just, they're so, they're so happy and getting ready to follow him along, and he's all kind of eyes closed, proudly walking in front of them. Very nicely rendered. I like the way the outline is used. If into your life the others come, brought to life by your father and mother, just remember the calf poppy seed and how he became an older brother. Hmm. There was like some rhyme in there, but it didn't quite work for one of the lines. But very nice. And, oh, now that, that calf's cute. This one off to the side of poppy seed. Very nice. If I had the time and didn't have to worry about copyright, I would scan in all these pages for you guys to look at. But I have a better idea. You could go online and buy it. <laughs> My attempt at a plug. But the art's wonderful. Once again, nice rendering of the muscles and skin showing the wrinkling and everything. It just They did such a good job with the detail and still giving it a little bit of exaggerations of certain features to make it cute. So I'm not saying cows realistically rendered aren't cute, but they're extra cute in this book. Because it's the land of serendipity, so there. I still find that particular image interesting. She was flipping back through the book, and we landed on the one where the we landed on the one where Poppy is getting whacked in the face. Poppy sees just smiling, and we're like, "What?" Out of all the images, that's the one that really doesn't match the text. What do you think? Oh, it's cute. It's a nice story about being an older brother or sister. I'm still not entirely sure why I have a serendipity book about a cow. The cow's cute, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, he is, but with the exception of Buttermilk Bear, all my other childhood serendipity books feature horses, pegasi, unicorns. I have very specific tastes as a child. Would you have just picked this one based on the cover, or would you have flipped through it? I would have flipped through it. I'm thinking it might have been the only serendipity book at the book fair. Ah. Because the stamp tells me it came from the book fair, because I never would have done that to one of my books. I remember my elementary school library using that stamp. Hmm. What do you remember about the book fairs? Lots of books. I remember being able to pre-order sometimes. You had those little paper pieces, you know, like a two-page spread. Hmm. I remember those. It was like almost a magazine-like thing. Not that thick, though. Mine was usually at least four pieces. I remember a particular company. I can't remember the name right now. Scholastic. Yeah, Scholastic. They were usually scholastic book fairs. And I also remember buying a lot of stuff that had to deal with characters that were in, I was interested in, like the Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, when their movie was first coming out, there were these books with behind-the-scenes stuff, but they were targeted at kids, so it wasn't really that much, but it was cool to see scenes from the movie and different angles. So this has been Poppy Seed, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. So, yeah, in case you guys forgot, we did a whole bunch of serendipity books already. And if Lux remembered, this one's at the very end, as of this timestamp, of the serendipity playlist. Well, it should automatically be put there by the system, and I will make sure it's there. <laughs> if you really enjoyed this book, check and see if we have a link for you to purchase. If we don't have one, I'm sure a quick Google search will find you a new or used bookstore with a uh, copy in stock. And um, if you just feel like shopping, there's the Ebates link, because I can. 
Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you again for listening.